What's happening? It's Mr. Jefferson, and I'm on the clock with R.E.O.P. Shit, I'm from Pensacola, Florida. I moved to Jackson when I was 10, Southside Superstar. There it is. East side of Pensacola, Ariel Avenue. How was it? Shit, that's the hood. <laughs> <laughs> So right across the street from us, the biggest plug, he uh, had the streets on lock, man. He used to throw barbecues. He was cool with his sons, play football and shit like that. But it just seemed like, like that was my experience of a nigga being rich. You know what I mean? Like seeing that nigga, he had all the don'ts, shit like that, candy painting whips, everything, so. Eight years old, I took it. I took a tape recorder to daycare and recorded with some, some of my homeboys. You remember the first song you recorded? Yeah, it was ass. P Cola, we've been living here all our life. P Cola, every day and every night. P Cola, and we think it's really tight. P Cola, P Cola. For eight years old now. Yeah. That was a hit. <laughs> I, I ran from my mom from daycare. I sprayed her with the water hose that day, and my family took their turns beating my ass. <laughs> hey, get up, let me get up, let me... SOS, shit on a shingle. My grandfather made that. You know, a little cream of mushroom, ground beef. And I don't be talking shit, but you slap some Tabasco on that thing. Chef's kiss. Damn, um, I think it it took more time for me to get comfortable podcasting. It takes more time for me to be comfortable with a song when it comes to rapping. So um, I would say rap is more tough for me, uh, but getting used to podcasting was difficult. It took a little time. Damn, I don't know. I think I throw. I, I think I do better live. So I would say it's tougher to record in studio than it is live uh like doing live podcasting when it comes to touching the stage it don't matter if i'm inebriated shit face you know what i'm saying like whatever i could i could i could perform so i would say it was great uh my grandfather took me to record for the first time my grandfather was a teacher he knew a gentleman in pensacola that uh had been a student of his that had recently graduated and such he had his own home studio and it was like really set up. So they had invested a lot of money into it. My grandfather knew his father, um, took me over there. Like I said, I was probably eight, nine years old. And um, my grandfather orchestrated everything, walked out, you know, he let me record. And they, they really let me have my time, man. We freestyled together, we wrote songs, all of that. So it was cool. Ooh, damn, why you do that, man? Um, Sam Cooke, I'm gonna say, just because of like what his sound is, like Sam Cooke might be one of the, like he might be the greatest singer. Curtis Mayfield in that regard might be one of the greatest writers ever. So, um, damn, that's a tough one. Sam Cooke, I wanna lean towards you, dog, but Curtis Mayfield got more songs for me, honestly. But Sam Cooke's songs, I would say they resonate more, so. Damn, I'm gonna go Anita. I uh, I just resonate more with Anita Baker, Patty. No disrespect, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't never had none of your pie, so. So again, man, this Mr. Jefferson. I was on the clock today with R.E.O.P. You already know what it is. Um, man, I tried to be quick, but nigga get long-winded, so forgive me. <laughs>